everybody, welcome back. Northern Lion plays the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, plus 12 wins in a row. You can never complain about our last run. Uh, it's illegal. There's your seed, by the way. Ooh, baby. A subscriber. Okay, am I gonna die on the way out here? I feel like I handled this pretty badly. Look at that, look at that, look at that, we gone. <laughs> oh, that was... A little spooky, a little spooky. I'm not gonna deny it. Um, did not not my proudest uh, move there, um, and yet, well worth it. But yeah, can't complain about our last run. It's illegal to complain about a run where you have blank card and uh, emperor. It's just you know, that's what I always ask for. Is basically like when you uh, get strong enough on a run, they just give you like an elevator down to the final boss and go like, okay, if you think you're so cool, then why don't you beat him? And then you do, and they go, what? I never could have possibly predicted this. Did you guys notice, by the way, that Netflix has added a, um, a shuffle feature? I've, I've, I'm actually, so I'm pessimistic of this idea, but I love that it exists, so... Wait, the number one, this is a spicy choice here, but the number one thing I complain about with Netflix is that I cannot find things to watch, which I recognize is a, uh, it's a stupid complaint because there's always, you know, there's a billion things you go watch on Netflix, things you've never seen before. They might not always be good, like, it, that's the thing, you're not looking for something to watch, you're looking for something to entertain you, and even more so, you're looking for something to entertain you the most. Which it makes picking something on Netflix sometimes a little complicated, right? Because some you're like, okay, well, would The Queen's Gambit entertain me more than uh, watching Alien Worlds or whatever the new show was called? Um, would it... Uh, I still haven't seen season three of Stranger Things. Like, let's not forget to put that in the mix. And then, you know, it, you get... It, it's complicated. Then you're like, what? Do, maybe I'll just look at my phone anyway. You know, maybe I'll just put on the news and I'll look at my phone. But... Um, I think that it, it's less of a problem with Netflix, more, well, the main problem with Netflix is that it doesn't have the Mandalorian, <laughs> am I right? Like, I mean, that last episode was pretty good. However, um, I forgot what I was saying. Regardless, I was saying something important. Oh, Netflix having a shuffle button, I think is very interesting. Now, what I want it to do... No, actually, you know what? I'm going to go back on what I didn't even finish saying. What I was going to say is what I wanted to do is a pure shuffle. Like, I wanted to have, I wanted to equally weight every single, um, property in the Netflix catalog, regardless of genre or language, um, and then, you know, just serve up some random stuff. But I think actually what I want, you know, you can, you can poo-poo, uh, TikTok all you want, and it is a platform that, you know, largely is for, I wouldn't say like, young children, but, you know, let's say kids under the age of 16, for the most part, make up the bulk of the demographic. Um, but there are, in my opinion, at least, some lessons to be learned, at least in the way that it delivers its content. It's easy, if you've never used it, and I understand why you wouldn't, because, you know, you're you're not a little kid, you're 24. I don't, I don't, I don't need, like, Roblox anymore, I have Minecraft. Oh, back in my day, we just, uh, we had the PlayStation 3 and we didn't complain about it. Okay, congrats, you're ancient. Um, you see, like, you, you, now you're becoming the thing that you made fun of me for being when I was your age, which was a few years ago, but now you're the age now that I was then, and now you're like, I get it, but you dare not apologize. Anyway, regardless. I still think there's some lessons to learn from it because you can really like, I'm not going to say you should lose hours and hours scrolling through your TikTok for you page, but if you're not familiar with it, basically the way that it works is, you know, when you start your account, you don't really have like any interests. Based on the amount of times you watch content that they serve to you, the algorithm sort of builds out like, hey, this person likes this, they don't really like this, and it's constantly getting adjusted like based on your preferences and, and your habits. Um, a little scary, yes. But also, at the same time, uh, you know, a, a kind of an effective content delivery mechanism. I took that just for the precedent. I'm not afraid to admit it. And at the end of the day, you know, nobody wants these apps to know everything about them. But at the same time, when it comes to being entertained, you would rather have them serve up things that it believes you would like. Now, is the juice worth the squeeze? This, you know, it depends on who's squeezing the juice, I think. But, um, regardless... 
why, why you know the, you, in the half hour that you spend looking for something on Netflix you could have seen a hundred videos on TikTok why would you do that it's much less like long term fulfilling like you're never gonna be like oh yeah I learned a lot <laughs> Wow, and, and honestly, if you're watching TikTok and you ever find yourself being like, I learned something very valuable there. I'm not going to say that it's a universal rule, because, you know, there's so many creators doing various sorts of things on these platforms. But if you're ever like, wow, I didn't realize it inside of like a, a car battery is just like 17 AA batteries hooked up in series. That's where you should find maybe a moment where you're like, I don't believe this. This feels like maybe, could they be tricking me? I think so. The The classic example I always go back to is there's this guy on, it's probably like a, a, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of people doing this on TikTok now, but there was a guy that, you know, when I was using the platform a little bit more on a, on a professional level uh, in the first quarter of this year, I'd always see his videos pop up on my For You page. I'd be like, I'm going to show you an incredible mental magic math trick. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to uh, picture a vegetable that starts with C. I want you to picture a fruit that starts with B. I want you to uh, think of a country that starts with U. Okay, now before you even think about anything, click the heart button on the video, which is like follow. Um, or, you know, there's like a like button and then like double tap on this video in order to, you know, lock in your answer. And then think of a number between 1 and 10. Was it 6? If it is, let me know, you know? And you, you, you think about it and you're like, okay. First off, I was thinking of 4, so no, you didn't get me. Secondly, you start to, you know, reverse engineer the machinations of, like, what's going on here. Well, really, it's kind of like, from a very cynical standpoint, it's ingenious content to pull on a, a gullible audience. Because, you know, roughly, probably slightly more than 1 in 10 people are going to pick 6. Um, because, you know, a lot of people... Some people might pick, like, 1, but not that many people are going to pick 10, I think, in my experience. But reg regardless, I'm getting too, like mathematical and statistical about it so let's say 10 percent of the audience watches it and goes what the heck it was six if even half of those people somehow believe that it's like a magic trick or like how did you do that you know the, your numbers grow like crazy <laughs> especially like on tiktok if your video goes viral like you can get tens of millions of views in like a day so you can see like how this kind of like these mind viruses propagate by the way i'm not saying that's a good thing I'm just, you know, highlighting, I guess, a case study of, of the way that TikTok works, if you're not familiar. But anyway, um, I, I would, I honestly think it would be cool, because let me, let me encapsulate this first. I think the lesson from something like TikTok is that low risk content, like content that's a low risk for a person to view, can be good. You know, I'm not saying we shouldn't have prestige television and movies and books and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but you know, sometimes when you just want to be sort of mindlessly entertained, you would rather watch like a meme compilation of 30 second vines. I guess they're 6 seconds, but you get what I mean. And I know vine is dead, but okay, of 6 second bites if anybody was using the platform. Um, then be like, you know what, I'm gonna all of a sudden just start to get invested in suits or something like that. So what I think is, like, the, the problem that I have with Netflix sometimes is that it's such high-risk content. Like, not from a morally objectionable standpoint, but just like, you know, if... Hey, which, let's watch one episode of something and see if we like it. That's like a 20 to 60 minute commitment. And then you can't... Like, the first episode so often is just like a setup and maybe they, like, tease you with a little mystery and you're like, well, I can't stop. I gotta see at least, like, two or three episodes now before I before I pass judgment. You know, there, I'm not gonna say it's a high risk, like, oh, you're gonna, like, lose your life. But it's kind of like, you know, when given the choice, the, the way I think about it is like when a friend asks you to, like, watch a viral video, what, when are you gonna be more likely to watch it? If it's, you know, 35 seconds long or if it's an hour and a half long? I think it's a pretty easy option there. So what I would love is actually, you know, Netflix has, I'm, I'm sure it's got so much user data. What I would actually love is like if they made a function that was like a sizzle reel. Um, so it was, imagine it's like shuffle, but instead of playing the, uh, the show, like it would be like, hey, we're going to play episode one of, you know, like the circle or something like that. 
Instead of that, what if it took like viral moments from its shows or the moments of his shows that got, like, got the most repeat views or like people like rewound the tape to watch it, you know what I mean? And then it put those into like a queue and then it just showed you like a sizzle reel of the funniest stuff on Netflix or the most engaging stuff on Netflix. I don't know if it would actually work, like I see a lot of problems with it. Like uh, outside of the context of a show, you know, that's had the opportunity to build up characters and, and jokes for many years um some jokes might not actually make coherent sense but it's just it's just a thought you know it's just some because and i don't know people always get in my opinion they always get like way too anal about stuff like that isn't that what's wrong with humanity that we can't focus on anything longer than 30 seconds okay then just stop watching netflix i got there's a lot of great books you can read or even then, you know, you can go back and read in human history all the times people were like, books are corrupting the nation's youth, their attention span is so small now. Just go stare at the sky. Okay? Like, I'm not trying to say that TikTok is the next evolution of, like, human intellect. All I'm saying is that, you know, making the content more digestible and, and more algorithmically, like, shareable and stuff like that, I get that it's very easy to kind of be like, this is exactly what George Orwell warned us against, but... You know, at the same time, so what's better? Like, you telling me you never scroll through Netflix for, like, 45 minutes and then just decide to go to sleep? Like, is there virtue in that? I'm, trust me, we're on the same page there. I always think there's virtue in toil, but at the same time, you know, there's got to be a better way. Anyway, so I haven't used the feature yet. That's a scary thought, right? I just talked about it for, like, 13 minutes or something. Haven't even used the feature, just literally has a 13 minute riff on a button appearing on, on the Netflix UI. So, um, that's about where I'm at, like, lately in my life. You know, there's not really anything else to talk about. <laughs> hey, too bad. 48 hour energy is not that good. Eh, we got out for free at least. Actually don't want the key beggar. Amazing. Truly, I, I was flabbergasted. I, I waited there for a moment just to see if it had decided maybe there was something it would rather pay out with. I would say we do have a problem on this run, by the way. Like, all of our stats are good except HP, but our HP is even good because of um, nine lives. But we face a conundrum. We face a problem. None of our stats are great. And HP is one of those things, like... Most of the, especially early, you'd rather have 9 lives than have, like, you know, 9 HP, I think. Eh, maybe. It, it depends. I, I could see an argument for, for multiple different perspectives here. Let's put it that way. Um, but once you get into the parts of the game where one hit kills you at that level, that's just rude, honestly. Um, that's, that's, and that, the, like, insult to injury has been added there with that room. Um, it, that, I'm getting punked here. Ashton? <laughs> anyway. What was I talking about? Basically, like, our HP could slip away pretty quickly. That's what I'm trying to get at. It probably won't. Like, this, it, it I mean, especially when it rains, it pours. And we are only, uh, we, we've gotten a little drizzle, a little drip drip of the guppy possibility. So hopefully we get absolutely soaked. I know what I said, and you know what? I don't regret it. I don't regret it in the least. I'll say it again. Bop, bop, and I'll say it again. I'm spinning. I'm spinning. I'm trying to think, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> Normally, this process is not articulated, but I'll articulate it now because I'm, I'm finding it hard to pull something out. It's one of those, th I wonder if this is relatable for, like, new parents, but, like, I really do feel like, like, I do so much during the day. Like, especially we're waking up so early by our standards, you know, because of the baby. Um, and, and we're going to bed, like, not that much later, or n not that much earlier, I should say, than usual. Um, so I'm like, my days must be full. And they are. But it's not that shareable. You know what I mean? I know I've, I've said this before, but... You know, you think that maybe... 
Well, let's start with the obvious. We didn't have the baby to, like, you know, just farm anecdotes. You know, it's more of, like, a... Consider it, like, a life milestone, I suppose. Um... And, like, a, a, a genetic calling for whatever reason that defies, you know, logical, um... Encapsulation. That hurt. That hurt. Good. Yeah, we, we could have... One in three chance of a deal with the devil is still pretty good odds. To throw that away for a one in eight chance, I'm now, I'm now like, you know what? One in eight, that's still pretty good odds. <laughs> no, you jerk! I can't believe we only have one bomb left now, too. Um, but even still, you know, we thought maybe that the baby would be like, you know, oh, we'd have so many stories. But really, like, you realize it's just a lot, like, it's a lot of feeding. It's a lot of diaper changing. And then a lot of, like, very sentimental moments that mean way more to the parents but are impossible to explain to anybody else. Like, she's been making... And uh, we've... This has been a long story arc, you know? It's a longer story arc than, uh, in many ways, um, uh, the sequel trilogy in Star Wars. <laughs> um, in many ways, in such as. Um, but, uh... Help... Help... Help me! So this blows. Um... I actually feel like the confusion is making this boss harder. Uh, but, like, the, the story arc lately is, like, she's making, like, multi-syllabic babbles. <laughs> you can only do so much material on that, right? I did find myself yesterday, you're gonna laugh, I found myself yesterday almost watching a Larry the Cable Guy uh, comedy special. Something I never thought I would face in my life as kind of, oh, please, please. Oh my god. I mean, I, I don't know, like, what to do. We shouldn't be dying against Carrie and uh, Queen over and over, but... We are, is the thing. Um, how did it happen? Well, I, you know, I was scrolling through Netflix, as one does. And I, he told a joke about how he's on a diet. And, um, you know, it's his wife that's got him on the diet. By the way, Larry the Cable Guy, for context, is a, a comedian who was at the height of his popularity in, like, the... The late 2000s, in like the, the genre, not the genre, the decade, not the millennium. Although, who knows, you know? It's still 900 years away. You never know. Cybernetic Larry the Cable Guy. Get her done. You know what really chaps my circuits? <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm trying to delete it. Um, he told the joke about how, like, you know, he's on a diet and he gets one cheat day. Because, uh, you know, his wife wants him to lose weight, which is very sensible. Um, because, uh, okay, well, moving on. Um, but regardless, uh, you know, he thought it was crazy that, like, you know, at 4 a.m. the dog will wake up to, you know, it'll whinny. And then you feed the dog and it's very noisy. Uh, and his wife doesn't wake up. The next night he uh, wakes up because the dog's barking because the dog's hungry so he feeds the dog and thinks he'll get a little bit of cereal himself and then as soon as he pours the bowl of captain crunch his wife goes put the captain crunch away and then he said uh well you know i thought to myself next time i go down to get a midnight snack i better bark and i i was like you know what it's a cleverly constructed joke i'm not the arbiter of what's funny and what's not but you know i i really you know my Understanding of Larry the Cable Guy in the mid 2000s was that he's a uh, you're gonna make me say it. He's kind of like a, a a trust fund kid from the East Coast who kind of like put on a rural pastiche in order to achieve marketability, and the comedy was just kind of like pandering. Um, but I was like, you know what? That's a genuine like that's a joke. I know that sounds like a low bar, but I was I was actually like impressed. Did I watch it? No, because it's Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I might be a, a father, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not at that level of, like, dad humor yet. Come on. Come on, dude. Just don't. Just don't. Don't do it! Don't come down here. Don't come around here no more. I'm just, I'm wedging myself in the corner. And hoping for the best. We're almost there. Come on. Come on, Abel. Let's go! Let's go! No! No! 
Dude, I'm friggin' losing it! Should have maybe been a little bit more aggressive there. Th this is one of the most annoying boss fights I've ever experienced. So, Carrion Queen... Yeah, that one was just not very good. Carrion Queen does one full heart of damage. Okay. Our speed's not that great. It's hard, harder to get away than usual. Okay. Um, we want Carrion Queen to eat the bombs. But Carrion Queen... Uh, Gets confused as soon as a tear lands on her and she walks in another direction. Okay. Um, so, remember earlier where I said, like, we could lose all of our hearts here? Like, yeah, man. Not here, but, like, on the run, I suppose. And it ended up being here. Okay, you're gonna start doing your, your yeah, there, the DVD screensaver. Isn't it? It's the interaction between the DVD screensaver and the poop and the confusion that, like, your brain just has no idea how to handle it, dude. Oh my god, we did it. Okay, now we probably could have done that on the first attempt. Very happy, by the way, to have some HP. Take me, <laughs> take me down to the next floor. That was a little, not so amazing, but okay. Necropolis 1. Anyway, so that's the story of how I almost watched um, a Larry the Cable Guy stand-up special. I also, one of the things I saw about it, I was like, it's like 63 minutes long. That scares me. I feel like it's got to be at least 70 minutes for, for stand-up comedy or you start getting, you know, concerned. I always remember the first time I cared about like a, a media runtime was when I, I saw... So, Men in Black 1 came out in, like, 1998, 1997, something like that. Everybody loved it. It was a cultural event, right? Um, Men in Black 2 came out. I remember reading the reviews, and the reviews were like, it's not very good. And I was like, uh, I don't believe you. You've got an agenda. <laughs> You're trying to stop Tommy Lee Jones from winning Best Actor. Um, best Alien for Tony Shalhoub's dog. But... Anyway, then I looked more into it because I was going to go see the movie with my friends. And I saw that the movie was 82 minutes long. And I went, well, I've been waiting four years for a movie that's 82 minutes long. I'm not suggesting you can't make a movie that's great in spite of a short runtime like that. But, but 82 minutes is like... I, I don't necessarily think there's a hard and fast rule that movies under X length are, are guaranteed to be bad. But I also definitely do think that if you can't get to that kind of like 90 minute runtime, you know, what are you doing? You got Will Smith. He's, he's like the most personable actor in Hollywood at this point. Can't you just go like, you know, just, just freestyle for nine minutes throughout the movie? Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> Little embarrassed again that we got hit against Bloat. That's okay, though. Hopefully, you know, something like Blue Candle from our, our shop would help out an awful lot. Um, we really don't want to lose this HP, I'll tell you that. It's kind of a given. I feel like we, we definitely have not played well this run. But you ever, like, scroll so far through Netflix, you end up in, like... Uh, a different country? <laughs> I know that, like, there's a better way to describe this bit. But, like, sometimes you scroll so far through Netflix that all of a sudden the algorithm thinks, like, maybe now you're a Portuguese speaker. You just start to, you know, uh, recommend, like, dozens and dozens of Brazilian comedies to you. No, that's just me, maybe. Okay. It's Groundhog Day, but in Spanish. You're like, okay, I'll give it five minutes. I feel like stand-up comedy... Really, comedy in general is one of the hardest uh, movies to watch in a foreign language. You know, I'm sure there are um, comedies that kind of buck the trend. Amelie, I suppose, is a good example. Force Majeure, the, the movie that Dinner for Schmucks is based on. Um, you know, all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> but I feel like it's it's hard to capture that, like... That nuance, right? Like, if you're not an English speaker from North America, 
Does the joke in The Hangover where Zach Galifianakis says, um, it's a satchel, Indiana Jones wears one, does that come across as a joke or does that just come across as like a bearded man making a factual statement? <laughs> The joke is that he's trying to defend his masculinity for, I mean, it's not a hard joke to understand. I mean, it's the hangover, you know? It's uh, a pretty, uh, y you know, you don't have to be a scholar in order to break down the humor in it, but I just wonder, you know, like how many times you would miss a joke if, if it wasn't from, you know, the culture that you participate in on, on the regular. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. And by maybe, I mean like 100% definitely. So I'm, I'm strapping in here, because this feels to me like the kind of run that could be uh, a long one. And it definitely feels like my own fault, to be clear. I, I've squandered what you would presume at this point is at least one deal with the devil. Tammy's head is a, a functional, actual spacebar item, which is the sort of thing that we could really use right now. And it, I mean, I'm not saying we deserve it, but it would be really nice to get something half decent in here, and, and we did. We, we actually got two things that are half decent. Your value proposition for each probably is, uh, you know, it depends on what you like. But Tammy's head, Deadshot, these are, these are big improvements. Anybody else have those movies that you've seen probably like ten times the runtime of the movie, but you've never actually seen the movie front to back? I feel like it's happening a lot, you know, because I get, I get a little bit more mindless TV watching now as a result of, you know, being up early with the baby. So, you know, I, you know, I look at what's on and TLC is always playing a show like, <laughs> look at this weirdo. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, it's too weird for me right now. So I go to like HBO Crave, which is Canada's HBO plus HBO Max, I guess. Um, and I, I've seen, no word of a lie, I have seen the opening one-third of Shazam like 20 times. I have no idea where it goes from there. It, by the way, it seemed good. It seemed fun. Um, and yet, I've, I've never been compelled to finish it, mostly because I'm like, oh, let's get some work done. But I've also never been compelled whatsoever to change the channel. Because there's, like, nothing else on. I still I've, I did this bit before, but I'm, like, so offended. I, you can call me a boomer if you want, right? I got Bloomberg News so I could, you know, keep abreast of the price of copper uh, in the world's slowest delivery mechanism possible rather than just Googling the price. Like, why would you do that and get the real-time copper price at your uh, fingertips whenever you wanted when instead you could just turn on the television and hope that the guy talks about it at some point in the next 20 minutes? Um... But, like, on the weekends is literally just ads for, like, Dr. Ho spinal, like, massage chairs. And I'm like, don't take this the wrong way, Dr. Ho. Maybe, maybe this is offensive to you. I don't trust a 65-year-old doctor who looks 30. You might think that it airs you a little extra credence. Because you're like, wow, look at this guy. He looks so great for his age. Uh, clearly, like, he's doing stuff that's working. I don't see it that way. I, I see it much more as, uh... This guy does not look his age. Is he trying to sell me something? And because the guide says paid programming, the answer is yes. But he was making audacious claims. He had, like, a, a foot massager. You put your feet on it, um, and then it kind of, like, you know, it vibrates. And, okay, he was like... So, first off, it, like, redistributes the fluid that you store in your legs throughout your body, so you feel lighter like you would after a massage. And I'm like, you know what? There might be something psychosomatic there. I don't know the medicine of it, but um, it, it seems plausible that you could at least... Wh whether it actually does anything, I don't know. Is it possible that you would feel better after you used it? Sure. You know, I, sometimes I, I feel like a little electricity throughout my body after I've used an electric toothbrush, you know? I have a, a certain, you know, joie de vivre just as a result of the dental cleanliness. Um, but then he was like, okay, so if you got, like, any kind of, like, leg, neuropathy, diabetes, uh, gout, edema, fibromyalgia, I was like, dude, can you, you, you could just say that? You can just get on the... I, I didn't know, like, I don't know the rules for this kind of stuff, but I didn't realize you could just get on the TV and be like, oh, yeah. 
Like, if you got, like, uh, upset stomach, this foot massager is for you. Uh, existential malaise? We got you covered. We have lives. We should probably go pretty deep here at... HP? Nope. Um, I'm not willing to go much deeper than that. Let's, let's cap it right there. I still remember... And, and I don't see this as controversial, but some people may. Uh, but I doubt it. But I warn you in advance. But I remember when I was in high school, like, I, I was watching TV at, like, 2 a.m. It was before broadband internet was the norm. <laughs> and, uh, there was, like, a religious infomercial. Whatever. You know? It's, it's not, uh... It's not for me to say, I suppose. To some extent. But this is for me to say. This was more like, like a genuine scam. They were selling, like, pre-packaged bread, like little buns, that were supposedly baked with a bread recipe that, like, Jesus Christ himself had written. And then, so you're like, okay, whatever, Jesus bread. What's the harm? Well, they were literally, like, saying, they were having testimonials from people that were like, I have, you know, a terminal diagnosis, and then I ate this bread, and, like, the next day, magically, I was cured. And I'm like, I don't think so. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I don't necessarily trust Big Pharma, like, a hundred percent. Um, but I'm definitely not one of those people who's like, oh, they've got a cure for everything, they're just not giving it to you. Um, <laughs> dude, screw it, let's do it. I'm, let's go all in on this glass cannon. Um, you know, like, Big Pharma doesn't want you to know that extra virgin olive oil will cure your hemorrhoids. You don't need to spend all that money on Preparation H. Regardless, I really do think that if uh, this bread recipe worked, AstraZeneca, um, Pfizer, Moderna, um, Merck, GlaxoSmithKline, etc., etc., they would be selling you that bread. Now, would they be doing it for... Five easy payments of nineteen ninety nine. No, they'd probably be like, you know, it's it's thirty five hundred dollars a dose. But on the other hand, I still believe it would make it into the marketplace. I believe I do believe there's something to be said for you know the the marketplace your product sells in sends a signal about the product. And just in general, I'm not saying that there's not infomercial products that are actually great. One example now I. Can you get a better blender than this? I'm sure you can. But, I'll always go to bat for the fact that um, my housemate in university had a magic bullet, which is the, the blender where they're like, you can blend anything in it except ice cubes because then it'll shatter. But, like, it, it was it was a little reliable, you know, not, not a total piece of garbage, okay? Similarly, I mean, I don't know. Maybe now we're, we're getting a little bit out of my weight class. I had, in, in high school, I had a Bowflex style home gym. Um, we're two items away from Guppy, right? We got nine lives. If we've only got nine lives, then we're not taken. Um, and it's fine, you know. W w are you better off with maybe a, a gym membership that's cheaper, probably into perpetuity? Yes. I would say, and like a more traditional workout. But anyway, that doesn't mean that it can't work. But I do think there's something to be said for like, if you got to market your product through infomercials at 2 a.m., it's probably a piece of garbage. Like you can't even get it onto the home shopping network at like, you know, 10 a.m. Like if you can get on the home shopping network at 10 a.m., I would be willing to meet you halfway and be like, you know what? I expect that this thing's probably a piece of junk, but you, you're paying for like a primetime home shopping network uh, chunk here. So clearly, like, something's working. But at 2 a.m., when people are like, you know, perhaps addled by substance, sleepy, you know, sleepless, you know, you're, it feels like you're preying on people's anxiety with, with like a scam. It's the same, so like, I, th this might rub you the wrong way, but um, uh, people have very strong opinions about everything these days. What I'm about to talk about is not even slightly controversial, but um, the other day we had a, uh, a flyer on our doorstep for a Chinese food restaurant. And uh, it just like, the flyer was full of things that make you go, I don't know about that. First off, why are you using 
direct mail advertising in 2020? Like, you don't think that maybe... First off, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I understand. You know, people still do use the phone call to phone in orders. But, like, you're, you're going to... Not everybody is a millennial. But, like, you're, you're giving me a flyer that I'm going to look at. And I'm going to call the phone number on the flyer. And then I'm going to, like, talk to another human being. And be like, these are the foods that I would like. Instead of just hitting the button on the app. It is cheaper, don't get me wrong, to, to do it that way than do it on the app. But it, it, to some level, I, I do feel like if you're, if you're giving me direct mail advertising, basically dropping a physical piece of garbage on my doorstep, um, I don't know, it just raises, it, in, in my, you know, 32-year-old brain, it raises a certain level of suspicion at the quality of the product. Like, wouldn't if, if I googled best Chinese food Vancouver, your restaurant's not showing up. Why is that? So why would I, why, for the same price, why would I go with the thing that gave me the flyer versus, you know, the, the other options that are available in the city? I, by the way, you know, I'm not trying to, like, torpedo a local business or whatever. I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's no longer, you know, a situation where you, we live in an era where you're like, okay, what do you want? Pizza or Chinese, and you got like two flyers on your uh, or two takeout menus, like on a fridge magnet, you know, attached to your fridge. You know, now you got like the whole city at your disposal. It also, and the other thing was, it's still advertised as no MSG, which just is one of those things where I'm like, didn't we leave that behind in like the year 2000? Aren't we, like, now on the same page where, like, MSG is good or something like Or not good necessarily, but that's, like, a, a restaurant being like, NO SALT! MSG is delicious, man. If you think that MSG, uh, you know, gives you headaches, I'm not gonna be one of those guys who's like, you know, you're wrong. Because if you believe that it gives you headaches, I believe that it could give you headaches. I, I have, you know, certainly some placebos in my life, some superstitions, I suppose, that I'm like, I'm, I mean, how many times do I start a bit in Isaac with, like, I know this isn't how it works, but what if it is, you know? Suffice it to say, though, I, I, I don't share the same uh, proclivity or, you know, antipathy, I should say, towards MSG. It's delicious. If you're allergic to it, so be it. You know, I'm not going to be like, hey, you start getting headaches to own the streamer. Anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. How often do you get headaches? It's a, it's a sensitive subject. Everybody's different here. You know there are people, and I only found out about this on Twitter. You know there are people who have never had a headache in their entire life? They, like, they can't conceptualize what the feeling of a headache is like. That's... I'm, I'm not like, oh, you're so lucky. I mean, yeah, you're lucky, but I get, like, mild headaches. Probably, like, I don't know, once a month at most. And usually it's tied to, like, dehydration. Like, I'm like, why do I have a headache? This is so stupid. And then I think back to myself, and I'm like, have I had any water today or just coffee? And I'm like, oh, yeah, just coffee. That explains it. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. We made it through. It didn't look uh, likely all the time, but for now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. See you next time. See ya!